Well, I'm, I'm director of the UK's National Space Academy program, and I'm also a professor at the University of Leicester's Department of Physics and Astronomy. But the reason we're out here at the Global Space Congress is because the United Kingdom and the United Arab Emirates Space Agency have, have come together in a really ambitious three-year program of skills development, for, not only for the space sector, but for the wider science and engineering sectors. Because, you know, what we heard at this conference is something that we're always saying in the space community. Space has this unique power to inspire and I'd absolutely agree with that. The problem is that inspiration on its own isn't enough. If you want to grow a space sector or if you want to have greater number of young people empowered in, in, in science and engineering, you know, those subjects in which the, the qualifications have the most valuable educational currency, then you've got to light that fire but you've got to sustain it, which means you need to have skills development programs that have got government working with academia, working with industry and targeted at school students, at university students, bringing industry in and also teachers. Now that's what we've been doing in the United Kingdom with the National Space Academy program for several years and all of the evidence and the evaluations and so on, they show that it works. And so I'm delighted that we've been asked to work in an international collaboration with the Space Agency here, not just to help the Space Agency deliver on its goals for future growth, but also to enable the UAE to become a leading centre in the Gulf region for space skills development. So, in a nutshell, we're at the beginning of a three-year journey. I'm absolutely delighted to be here. For me, I, 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 I'm what, what people often refer to as a, as a child of Apollo. Um, I was one year old when, when Neil Armstrong landed on the moon, so I don't remember that. Um, but I do remember very grainy footage from December 1972. I'm four years old, and, and Jack Schmidt and Gene Cernan are taking the last steps on the moon. Um, I would think I was intrigued then, and certainly by the time of the Viking landings in 1976, that was it, I, I was hooked for life. So what drove or brought me into the sector and, and drove me on in, in, in physics uh, was a love for space. What I found absolutely fascinating though, I was always aware of, of Earth observation, and I was always aware of satellite applications, but it's only since I've formally been in the sector for the last 10 years that I've realized just what a treasure trove of activity we have and how significant it is. Because, you know, people ask me, what do you mean by space science? And I always say that, look, there are three categories. And there's only two of them that people associate with space. And those categories are, are getting out there, looking out there, and looking back here at Earth. So looking out there is astronomy, we all know about this. Getting out there, robotic and human exploration, but those satellites looking back at Earth, you know, when we look at the data we're getting from Earth observation satellites, meteorological satellites, when we look at the information we're getting from navigational satellites, telecommunication satellites, you know, this is not just the big revenue driver for the space sector. This means that space-enabled services, they're, they're completely embedded into the, the fabric of our 21st century way of life. So if we want to carry on our development societally in the 21st century, we don't just need the revenue generating capability, we need to have the data that's going to better our lives. And if we don't have the right new people coming in with the right skill sets, then all of our aspirations for exploration, for space exploitation, you know, then they're just going to remain dreams. So, you know, going back to answer your question, what drew me in? It was definitely exploration, but you know, we can't have space exploitation without that exploration. If we want to drive forwards, you know, we need to have investment and we need to have new ideas in all of those areas of space science. If it was one piece of advice for people going into, into the sector, I have to say it, it's get qualifications in, in science and engineering because you know you, they will unlock doors of opportunity that, that you would not even dream exist at the moment. If I have another bit of advice, it would be couple this with getting involved, you know, with your local space agency. Local, you know, depending upon which country you're in. You know, be proactive, start approaching some of the space sector companies, not just the big ones who are very, very supportive. We've seen at the Global Space Congress here, we've had Airbus, we've had Lockheed Martin doing superb skills development programs for young people of all ages, uh, but also some of the smaller companies because there are some very small entities that are putting disproportionate efforts this way. But I need to explain why this is such an opportunity for companies because of course this means an investment from companies' times. You know, we had our 
uh, our master classes during the Congress uh, yesterday and today. And, and we saw more than 40 undergraduate students, more than 100 high school students. And what was quite interesting with the undergraduate students is, is you know, they, they've already chosen space science. You know, they were doing physics, doing engineering, some were doing aeronautics. Um, and I showed them a sample of, of, of a meteorite that I have here. You know, um, the idea of Mars sample return is not going to happen for a decade, but, but this is actually a sample of, of, of the planet Mars that, that we have here uh, and the students were able to hold. This is part of a, of, a, of a Martian meteorite. It was blasted off the surface of Mars 10 and a half million years ago, went into orbit around the sun, and in 1911 it landed in, in the town of Nakla in, in, in Egypt. So, you know, we've got samples of Mars here on Earth. Now, when I show this to the students, you might think this is just sort of icing on the cake, it's a wow factor. But what the students at all levels were wanting to do was to interrogate me. How do we know it's from Mars? Tell me more about the analysis of the gas samples trapped inside. In other words, you know, you can take something that's got a wow factor, but you can use it to build some really focused questioning, some really focused skills at whatever level of students and teachers you are working with, be it from primary school all of the way up to not only undergrads, but postgraduate students and even postdoctoral students. So again, that was a really long answer to your question, but what I'd say is that there is, there is an ask for what students can do, and I think there's also an ask for what industry can do. Some companies are doing it, we're seeing some agencies really stepping up to the mark in terms of their skills development, and for us with the National Space Academy, we're just delighted uh, that we're at the beginning of this three-year journey for the, for the Gulf states.